It is a real privilege to be speaking here before Medicine X, and um, I have to admit I've been really nervous about it. I'm nervous about it because I think of Medicine X as being about empowerment, about celebrating the expertise and the strength and the courage you all bring. And we certainly saw that this morning. But what I'm going to talk about is um, how broad societal forces shape our behavior and thereby influence our health. But I'd like you to bear with me as I lay this out, and then I'd like you to bring that power uh, to the opportunity that I believe we have. Everyone in this room knows the importance of getting access to good medical care when we're sick or injured. But most, most models of the determinants of health estimate the contribution of medical care at about 20%. And of course, genes matter, as do environmental exposures. But the, f the factors most associated with health and longevity are social circumstances, like income and education level, and behaviors, like diet, exercise, and smoking tobacco. Our behaviors impact our health, but the choices available to us impact our behavior. So put another way, the, uh, the obesity epidemic in our country is not just a matter of individuals making choices. It's way more complicated than that. We choose our own paths, but the paths available to us have been shaped for us by socioeconomic forces and, I'm going to argue, by technology. The choices people make about the foods they eat, the activities they participate in, are constrained. They're constrained by what we can afford, where we can buy our food, our transportation options, um, and whether we feel safe in our own neighborhoods. Factors like race and income have a huge influence on where we live and the environments around us. So consider this. This is New York City. A distance of six stops on the 456 train in the New York subway is associated with a nine-year gap in life expectancy. So six stops, nine years. And I could show you the maps like this for DC, for New Orleans, for Kansas City, and South Dakota. For people to be as healthy as they can be, it's not just a matter of getting good access, access to good medical care or breathing a sigh of relief because we've won the genetics lottery. People need everyday behaviors in order to be healthy. Now, of course we know that people can get sick for all sorts of reasons, and some of them very random. But fundamentally, at a population level, our health largely comes from what we do all day every day. And the question is, where does that come from? And that's what I'm going to talk about. This awareness of the role of behavior and of the social forces that shape behavior uh, has led the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation to refocus its efforts over the past few years. Everything we do now is focused on building a culture of health in our country. We envision a day where every American can be as healthy as they can be, where the healthy choice is the easy choice, where the healthcare system is truly patient-centered and it's actually optimized to produce health. It's a culture where information about us is available to us and we make use of it to make better decisions, get better care, and contribute it to research. It's a culture where these opportunities are available to you wherever you live, whatever your resources. It's also a culture where we value and prioritize health and we consider the impact on people's health when policies and products are created, when leaders are developed, and when communities are built. I want to pause on this because I think it's so critical. We will become healthiest as a nation when we truly value health and when that value is reflected in our actions, in our decisions, in our designs, and in our actions. So, I said I was going to talk about how technology shapes health, so let's talk about technology. The last few years, we've seen the tech companies move into the health space, and this has been fantastic, right? We've got these wonderful wearables like Fitbits and, and, and Apple Watches that have actually made it cool to be conscious about our behavior and to take steps, both literally and figuratively, to improve our health and well-being. 
And we have great apps. We have apps like, like RunKeeper and Strava and MyFitnessPal, and they have user counts in the tens of millions. And so to the extent that all these apps and these wearables have catalyzed positive changes in people's lives, they're a huge contribution. But honestly, I think they're just working at the margins. Think about it. A device that reminds you to take more steps is really just telling you that the life that's been engineered for you doesn't create enough opportunity for movement in your day. In a culture of health, you could imagine that taking enough steps should just be a natural consequence of going through your day. These devices are beautifully engineered solutions, but they're about making the best of a system that's need in, in need of fundamental re-engineering. So please don't get me wrong, I'm truly grateful for all of the talent that has brought us these amazing devices, these apps. But if the tech community wants to have a really deep, long-lasting impact on health, our focus is going to need to go way upstream. Rather than focus just on health directly, we could focus on everyday life. Technology has such an influence on our everyday behavior. Technology does this because it regulates what's possible, and I think more importantly, what's easy, what can, what's convenient, and what's hard. And so let me just give a few examples. The automobile, of course, created the modern suburb and changed where we live, where we work, how we get around, even how we eat. Household appliances like washers and dryers, dishwashers, vacuum cleaners, and microwave ovens took a lot of the drudgery and some of the physical effort out of housework and actually created extra hours of leisure time. Televisions, and video games, and now phones redefined entertainment, uh, and in so doing also then used up that leisure time. Um, and the remote control, of course, made it easy for us to be entertained for hours on end without ever having to leave the comfort uh, of our couch. So in short, in 2016, our lives have been profoundly shaped by technology. Now, of course, these technologies are great, right? I mean, we're living in a truly miraculous age, and I wouldn't give any of it up. But I think we have to also recognize, as we celebrate a century plus of technological innovation and achievement, the lives we now lead have developed some unfortunate side effects. So the news is not, is not great, if you look at that. 38% of Americans are obese, are extremely obese. 71% uh, now obese or overweight. The diabetes rate has gone from 1% in 1958 to over 7% now. Female life expectancy is stagnating or declining in 45% of U.S. counties. And a study last, just last year showed an alarming increase in the death rate for middle-aged white men. Our CEO, Risa Levizo More, has said this very clearly. We're raising the first generation of Americans that will live sicker and die younger than our parents. So we should be concerned about this, and I think we should take it as a sign that while technological progress might be unrelenting, better health does not automatically follow. So 17 years ago, Lawrence Lessig said something profound. He said that code is law, and those who create code embed values in their code. And as that code proliferates throughout society, it expresses those values. The people that are working today on the technologies that we will all use in the future have the ability to define our culture. And so, just as code is law, tech is health. And those of us who are working in tech, whether we know it or not, are working in health. How we move throughout our days is not random. It can't, and the technologies that, are, that shape how we do so were not always here. They came from somewhere. They came from some people. People invented them, people chose to invest in them, and we all bought them. We have the opportunity to invent, to invest in, and to buy new technologies, technologies that will shape our paths differently, 
technologies that will shape our paths in the direction of better health. Because I think we can do better. We can do better than spending an average of 50 minutes a day driving back and forth to work, as Americans now do. We can do better than microwaved meals. We can do better than spending an average of five hours a day watching television every day. We need new technology. Rather, rather than accept these patterns, you know, we need new technologies to reinvent transportation, urban planning, housing, furniture, clothing, entertainment, and to do so while embedding a core value of health. Now, you might reasonably ask, and you probably should, can we actually make these kinds of changes? Are these changes just way too big? Um, and I would say absolutely we can. There's a great quote from Bill Gates. He says, we always est overestimate the change that will happen in two years, but we underestimate what can happen in 10. So think about 10 years. Think about how much change can happen in 10 years. 10 years, we did, 10 years ago, we did not even have iPhones. They didn't exist. Just try to imagine a day without one or our society without them, right? You know, there's, there's no Uber, there's no Snapchat, there's no Instagram, there's no MedX app. There's no selfies <laughs> or selfie sticks. We can absolutely do this. This is possible. We're seeing some interesting examples. Now, Pokemon Go came, and, and to be fair, I think it might have went, but, but it did show that entertainment can get, actually get us out of the house and moving around with our friends. Motorized bikes that you can also pedal create new transportation options for people. And what's cool is it's taking a healthy choice and making it a little bit easier. So we can do this. I said at the beginning uh, that I was going to ask you to bring your power to an opportunity. And so here's that, here's that ask. I want you to demand better. I want you to raise the bar. I want you to dream bigger about this and then share those visions. I want you to encourage the tech community to take on these challenges and then reward them when they do. Think about what Bill Gates said, right? A lot can happen in 10 years. So think out 10 years, think out 20 years, and think about what technologies would help you lead a healthier life. What technologies would help build a culture of health? I really hope that you'll sh think of these things You'll share some ideas. You can use the hashtag techishealth. And I can't wait to see what you come up with and any reactions you have uh, to what I've been saying. Achieving the vision of a culture of health is not something anyone can do alone. It's going to take all of us working together, and it's going to take patients and nurses and doctors, of course. But it's also going to take engineers and developers and entrepreneurs. It's going to take designers and architects and real estate developers. Um, and it's going to take CEOs and investors. But I think most importantly, it's going to take all of us making sure that our voices are heard. Thank you.